Well, you're right, guys. I was just about to upload this mishmash video when a few add-ons arrived. So we've got uh, Kyra, Olivia and Rowan, three of my grandkids, totally outclassing me at growing potatoes in containers. And at the end, we got Sandra with her single seed potato challenge entry. Again, totally outclassing mine. Uh, like I said, a bit of a mishmashy type video again. Me talking as usual, a bit of plugging out. We've got some planting, uh, broad beans, parsnips, um, moving up some onions. Quick look at the hose lock grow bag water. That's a good bit of kit. Uh, there's probably a few extra things in there, so uh, here we go. Do you just need to put them in? Yeah, plant your potatoes. Do you have to bury them? Yeah, and then you need to put, no, get the compost from the bag and put it on top. And then bury them. Compost from the middle, Rowan. Olivia and you. You need help. Oh, I'm going over here because I cannot leave me. I'm going by myself. Someone made my potatoes. Can I get? Yeah. Do you just need to cover them, literally? Mm hmm. Then oh, how will they grow? Oh, yeah, because they're not called potatoes. The skin needs to be yellow. It's just brown. One of them that really seems like it just makes me chuck one pile over. This is hard work. A little bit more. Yeah, it's heavy, Olivia. Yeah, I don't mind. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. Ah, oh, there's one more potato that's not even covered. It's okay, just give it water while I sort it out. <laughs> water in here. It's really bad. Oh, well, when it's my turn. Olivia, there's too much in right, here. Stop. Stop. Now, it's not quite heavy now. Good boy. Take it back. Hey, all right, guys. I was uh, well busy night last night, Sunday night. I was following a couple of live chats. First off, it was Richard with the Veg Growers podcast chat, and then straight after that, Jane Kelly did a, a live with four channels. Uh, well, Jane, Jane Kelly from somewhere in the middle of England. Then we had Jim from the Lake Effect Gardener over there in Buffalo, New York. Old America land. Uh, Rebecca from Germany, mornings at the allotment. Mannheim, she's in, yeah. And um, there's that other bloke, what's it? Oh, Danny. He's from Welsh Wales somewhere, grapevine allotment or something like that. I don't know what it's called, but. <laughs> anyway, part of the, so one of the subjects on one of them, I can't remember now, it's all mishmashed all over the place, was um, we got around to tomatoes and I went, oh, sugar, I haven't checked my tomatoes. What it is, my, daughter, my granddaughter's got her um, rock tumbler. You know, makes those, you know, pretty necklace dingy. Going in the shed. And I couldn't be bothered to move it yesterday or Saturday. And uh, I haven't been in to check my tomatoes. Anyway, they're all right. <laughs> they're all right. But um, yeah, they are all right, actually. They're nice and still damp. That's the thing. But um, I want to get these potted on or pricked out potted on before they do get leggy. So um, that's what I'm doing today, really. I want to show you a couple, then do something else, like, you know. Let's see what we get on with this. I bet you can't guess what compost I'm using. <laughs> oh, Mother Earth. Hmm. Right, let's see. About getting these deep. Yeah. Brilliant. I'll put links to those channels I mentioned in the description. Very good channels, great channels actually. Yeah, no, what I like about them, I like my, most channels really, you know, down to earth and no ulterior motive, you know. What you see is what you get and they're doing what they do because they like doing it. You know, there's no, there's no, um, you know, oh, you've got to do it this way, you must do it this way, my way or no way, you know what I mean. But you get a couple like that. And, Let's face it, it'd be pretty boring if we were all the same, wouldn't it? You know. Right, let's 
just get these separated a bit. Okay, then on to the tumbler. My favourite tomato for hanging baskets. Far outweighs or far outperforms tumbling Tom. And I think they taste better as well. I don't suppose it overly matters if hanging basket tomatoes get leggy, does it? Because they're going to hang over the basket anyway. Well, there we are then. Tomatoes all uh, plugged out. <laughs> Some there. Chill is doing nicely. Aubergine's coming on leaps and bounds. I'm going to have to repot those again next week. Um, some more tomatoes there. Cucumbers just about poking up. Some have. Some haven't. Yeah, there's one over in the corner there. Look. Oh, there we are. That's my hand stuck to the fly paper. Oh, God. True potato seed, they've got to be potted on soon. Um, celeriac and parsley, um, celery. There's the first lot of tomatoes there, doing okay. Pinch those out pretty soon. Chilies and peppers there. Uh, another aubergine on top. Mm, what are they then? Can't remember. <laughs> Cosmos over there. And that's about it in here, I think. Yeah. And this is the Tetris game I have to play. So all this lot has come out of the greenhouse so that I can work in the greenhouse. <laughs> oh dear. I'll tell you what, that's those um, couple of little lettuce in the Ambassador and they've, they've come up in a day after I give them a quick squirt of Product X, which I shall reveal at a later date. I'm stood in the doorway here, and that one part of me is warm and one part of me is freezing. It is not nice today. Well, at least it's not snowing. One more cold night and it's going to start getting a little bit better. Right, what have we got here then? Kelsey. The Kelsey. Onions, hopefully some big uns. Big uns. So I'm going to do, I'm going to put them in modules for now. The, uh, I'm not going to put them out and I don't want to leave them lying around any longer, so... Cool. It take long, is it? Just to keep them growing. I've seen some people trim the roots and trim the tops. I don't like doing that. You're thinking, well, the plant's gone to all that effort to make this bit of growth. Why cut it off? Right, and these will have a good drinking. Oh, you're all right. Just sat in the greenhouse. Lovely and warm in here. What I'm doing, what I'm doing... I got a couple of those... Um, Hose lock, grow bag, is that what you call them really? Auto waterers? The grow bag sits on top and you fill the tank underneath and there's these little wicking systems that poke in, they pierce the bottom of the grow bag and the capillary matting sucks the water up, waters the grow bag. So I'm just renewing the capillary uh, wicking. The, um, I'm replacing the solar powered aqua, aquapon, hydroponics out the back garden. It was never overly successful. It worked, don't get me wrong, it worked. But um, I think that now and again the growth of, well last year was the cucumbers, there we are, that'll do. Um, the growth of the cucumbers was checked by maybe the lack of sunlight and because I'm using cocoa coir and clay balls, the water dries, the moisture dries out a bit quick. So uh, 
I'm replacing them with these grow bag waterers and a couple of giant grow bags. Uh, see how that gets on. I'll show you in a second once I've done these. Nifty bit of kit because the um, you can plug a hose pipe onto it and top it up with a hose pipe. Stay safe stand in there. Talk about lazy. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. So uh, there's two more of these to do, and I'll take you out there. So here it is. I'm working out this, the back garden this morning because it's nice and warm out here. But once the sun goes over the roof of the house, it's bitter out here. So all you do is put that there and push it on. Grow bag fits on top. These little spiky things pierce the grow bag and the water in the trough feeds it. You've got a level indicator and you've got to plug in for the hose or you can feed it in there, um, put the water in there. Pretty handy bit of kit really. Oh, let me show you this side. I don't know if you can see it there. Yeah. And what I'm doing with the second one, which I had two out the front with my strawberries in, I'm putting the other one here amongst the peas. The theory being that the peas will be uh, up and running before the cucumbers and they, uh, yeah, they won't hinder each other. So I've got to do the second lot now. Still got the moss hanging there for the robins. <laughs> Here we go then, one job done. And like I said, sun's gone in and it's cold. A quick look at the um, radish with a super soil trial. Um, eight in number one. Eight in number two. Six germinated number three. Well, that was a bit cold last night. I can't even push my finger in the soil of the, God, the radish trial, the um, super soil trial. Glad I didn't put my carrots and parsnips out now. Cool. Luckily the radish are hardy enough to withstand it. Right then. Some of the large or long parsnips have germinated chitted so I am going to put them in here as they I'm not going to wait for any more I'm going to get the ones in I can because in the past what's happened is they've um, dried out totally my fault obviously but you know so I'll give them a head start anyway I'm just going to mark them up with a little bit of vermiculite it's only a few um, See that? Yeah. Start in the middle. <laughs> Stuck to the tweezers. Yeah, start in the middle and work out. Oh See that one there is kind of drying out already. We'll see. The rest can go back inside. Well, you're right, guys. Just popped up the West End plot. Primarily just to grab that um, sample of compost there, my own compost. That's from, yeah, from this bin here actually. So I've done a little bit of weeding. Like I said, it's all um, surface weeds here. It's all annual weeds really. And as usual, I just left them lying on the surface. Hopefully they'll dry out tonight. Uh, Remove some of the pigeon-eating brassicas from down there. But the, um, the alliums are certainly growing pretty well here. I've got a whole bed there to use. Um, yeah, oh, I think there's garlic in there. That's the perennial or perpetual um, spring onion. Brilliant, that. Big bag of straw there still to use. And what I'll do with that, I'll probably put spuds in that bed there. 
and do them no dig and just sort of, you know, a small hole in the compost and put straw on top. Ooh. What else we done? Oh yeah, taking the kale out. Funny how the kale that was planted in 2020 that was here far outlasted the kale that was in that bed there in 2021. But what I have got is, is, let's get here, hang on. Shh. It's just like one of those, uh, those pictures of the bluebells in the woods, look. Purple, bro purple sprouting everywhere. I think I better cut a few of these and uh, give them to some neighbours. <laughs> Mind you, the two of the beds were for an experiment, weren't they? That was, this one here was for stroach, to see if the slugs um, kept away from that one. And that bed there was an experiment for the wool mat. And I'm happy to say they both worked. I'm talking to myself, look. Yeah, <laughs> and it, it is a man working and I'm just sitting here talking. <laughs> well here we are now, leaf and ground plot. Just putting some broad beans in. These are uh, exhibition long put in the deep root trainers or the root trainers. Proper job. Well, there we are. Bring you back when they're all done. Oh, see that? A nice set of roots on them. Well, there we are, all in. One, two, three, four, five, six rows of four, twenty-four, and five nasturtiums. I'm going to try and keep the black fly off. There's the overwintering ones there, the Suttons. Pretty much a waste of time, really. I'm not going to bother in the future. So, a quick, um, quick dose of Nemo Slug, and uh, I'll be on my way. Just before I wrap this one up for the day, I'd like to show you Sandra's entry into the Single Seed Potato Challenge 2022. That's Sandra M, not to be confused with any other Sandras out there. Ah, very nicely sliced it is too. And I'll tell you what guys, there's some nice entries this year. I'm thinking I'm going to struggle a bit. My potato is um, not up to par, shall we say. Anyway guys, hope you've enjoyed this. Catch you again next time. Stay safe and look after yourselves.